Um, so let's we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about we've talked about the costumes, the staging, the uh, uh, the ideas, the stories. Where is the music? Where is that? Why is that so difficult to talk about? <coughs> yeah? The music is it's somewhat difficult to talk about it, especially with regards to these operas, because like it's easy to look at it. You you kind of remember the uh, what it looks like like easier than what it sounds like. Um, especially because there's a lot of complexity involved with like these major productions. So it's easier to remember, I don't know, what it looks like. Music sounds like. You say it's slightly more abstract, because um, the, the vocabulary for talking about music is something that's relatively new uh, to you guys, perhaps. Um, one thing that I really liked about the uh, Ophelia presentation was that you guys actually went down to talk about the expression. And that, of course, is a very big topic in aesthetics, musical aesthetics. Um, and the, the ability to talk about that um, in relation to particular musical features doesn't have to be very, very sophisticated. I mean, the often the expressiveness of the opera will be um, tangible, you will feel it. And you can talk about it in terms of uh, the message of the opera, the words, or in terms of the tempo, in terms of the style, in terms of is it very agitated, is, are the notes kind of uh, jumping up and down, or is it kind of like a slow pace, very smooth kind of uh, aria. So these are, these are the musical features. You can still talk about uh, musical features even if you don't consider yourself to have had a lot of musical training. Um, so that's one thing. If you are interested in discussing, uh, in exploring further some of these topics, I have a few references for you, which I will immediately write into the board. Oh, that's great. Okay, if you're interested in looking at uh, gender and sexuality, you can look at a book, the edited volume of essays by Mary Ann Smart. I don't think you can see. Uh, the book is called Siren Songs. If you're looking, if you're interested in looking at eroticism, you can look at this book by Matthew Head. And the book is called Orientalism. If you're interested in looking at Handel as a queer composer, he was. You can look at a book by Alan Harris called Handel as Orpheus. Um, one of the things to think about in opera criticism, really criticism is about these two things. Right, and then these are some of the some of the topics that have been linked to the big two at the top: aesthetics or ethics. So, in relation to opera, you find sexuality, you find eroticism. There's an aesthetic function. Um, it serves the plot. It helps to portray, uh, let's say, uh, Ptolemy as a depraved character, whether because he likes orgy or whether because likes getting serviced by guys. Um, but from a modern day perspective, so you can you can take the take the perspective of in the opera, this is what the function is. But some of these writers have taken the modern day perspective of looking at it from an ethical viewpoint and saying, well, is that okay? Should we be uh, should these operas have this have been taken the step of portraying the Egyptians as the evil ones, or um, other issues like that. Um, so that's kind of like from a, and, and uh, opera criticism basically kind of circulates around the big two topics at the top. So you either take one side or the other, or you can combine both. 
Um, all right. So any comments about that? Questions, comments? I know there were some questions. Yes. Um, I actually do have like a question about aesthetics like when you're watching Julius Caesar. I, I, I understand kind of we talked in class about the reasons that the production itself was so like far from realistic. But I was wondering like the reason that somebody would want to do that. Because you would think that somebody would try to make it as close to the true story as possible. Like Besides trying to get people to talk about it and come out and see the opera, like what would be the reasons of putting on a production that is like yeah, so abstract? Like, what is it? There must have been a reason the production, like the setting people chose to do that, or like why they chose to make certain things look different. And you guys mentioned why does it look like boom if you close on time? Yeah. Uh, anybody want to venture a comment on that? Um, maybe because your focus is um, supposed to be on the musical aspect. Uh, kind of like the music can be part of the education. That's a good point. Um, it's as if they treat the music as the true artwork that doesn't change. You're not going to rewrite the music. But the stage, the staging is considered to be peripheral, so you could like update it in any way you want. But why update it? Why, why do you want to update that? Why is it? Why do people want to do that? Do you, do you like it when it's updated like that? No. No. Nobody likes it. Everyone hates it. <laughs> I mean, I can I can see the appeal of doing it because I mean. I've seen productions that kind of bring old school stuff and make it more modern. Mm -hmm. Like I saw a production of Midsummer Night's Dream back in Dallas that they do like uh, Owl City, like in the production with like the entire cast singing uh, whatever that really popular song for Owl City was. Fireflies. Yeah, um, <laughs> Fireflies. <laughs> or something. Um, and it was it, it made it kind of like. It, it made me really enjoy the production, but like to a certain extent, kind of, it makes everything more confusing to me when it's like, especially since it's already in German. The fact that there's like giant paintings floating around, it just kind of, it makes it all seem a little bit too surreal for me to like connect with. Yeah, it kind of detracts from the music actually to me. Like, why are there paintings moving around? I can't even focus on what's being said. It's so distracting. That's one of the points that's come up that all these staging uh, pyrotechnics distracts from the music. Um, what do you think of modern art? Let's compare this with modern art. Modern art, paintings, sculptures, plays. But what do you think? Like what? what are they, uh, how do they compare? In your, in your opinion, you have come across modern paintings and stuff, right? How about? Are we talking like where they just draw squares and like color art, or like a hundred years ago, that was modern? Uh, or like since the 1900s. Because like I seriously don't understand the girl who like drinks milk and then pukes it up and calls it art and sells her paintings for like thousands of dollars. Well, I think you can't blame her for finding expression in the way that she wants to. If somebody's willing to pay a thousand bucks, yeah. for it, then it's worth a thousand bucks. Because she's like. Uh, I mean, it's definitely a strange way to present this opera, but I think that's kind of the point of all of it, that it's really tough to judge whether it's meriting or not, because it's a way of expressing yourself in a way that's unique, and like, you could argue that maybe they're just doing it for the effect, that, you know, the after uniqueness and not trying to be true to themselves, but that's pretty tough to prove. I mean, maybe this guy, the way that he first saw this play was that it had giant-ass paintings, and they were moving all around the, uh, the scene, and that for some reason... It's all about what's around them, and so we wanted to represent that by having everyone else be small. I don't know. I think I'm open to it. You're saying there's a point to it, and and uh, and one thing is that it's clearly drawing on uh, art since 1900, the avant-garde. This is basically an avant-garde production. Uh, 
puppet, the, and the opera, the, the artwork, and the, the, the play within the play show represents the transition from the classical um, era, the, the era in which the opera was, was first uh, written in, to the modern era. And it sort of doesn't try to um, carry that over, it tries to change it in a way that makes it unique and it, it expresses, it expresses it. So you feel that the juxtaposition of the staging of the modern staging and the Baroque era music actually enhances the poetic idea or the artistic idea? Yes, because it's not like you're just you just you don't want to just reproduce something to be exactly the same. Um, I think that you want to make something. Yes, you're giving credit to the original composers and everything, but at the same time. You're making your own production. You're making your own art, really. And if you can find symbolic, um, in clever ways to reproduce things, and, um, I think even if the giant paintings are really strange and different to us, and we think that they're distracting, we're still thinking about them. We're thinking about the symbolic, or and I think the goal is to make you question the symbolic meaning. What's the point of this? Like, what's really going So I think that to a certain extent, you can like, you, there's only a certain number of ways you could reproduce the same storyline with the same music. Because the music doesn't change and that's the main thing. So if every production of like Julius Caesar was exactly the same, then there would be no point to going to a new production. So I can see why like somebody would want to throw in something different because it's a new take on the same music. It's like there's three hundred movies out there that have Superman fighting like Lex Luthor and trying to save the world. But it's they're different every time because somebody wants to throw a new spin on it. It's like what we talked about on the in one of the very first lectures of the classes we had with the composer and then the relationship between the composer and the um, performer and then the audience and everything. And I think that um, that translates even more I would I would agree with that, um, and also <coughs> one of the one of the things not to forget is that when they mount an opera, they need to make a profit. If people need to go to see it, it's usually subsidized substantially by um, public funds, but they can, they need a certain amount of uh, ticket sales, and this is one of the ways in which they are trying to appeal to a modern audience, and it's also appealing to a particular aesthetic, the avant-garde aesthetic, um, and kind of trying to um, Kind of give itself the kind of glamour that avant-garde art has, try, trying to borrow on that. Um, so it's a it's an interesting. I think it's an interesting production. Um, it's also possible to do a period production. Uh, I don't really have anything against that. Um, I think that in in some cases the the kind of the production of so actually does make the the artistic point more clearly. Um, the the plot itself involves a fair amount of sexual violence, and they kind of like bring it to the fore. On the other hand, um, it, it's arguable whether this is a good thing because um, you could say that it, it either highlights the message or it just continues in the objectification of women and men as sex objects. So. Um, there are many things you could say about that. But it's definitely a current production as opposed to a, to a traditional one. Uh, and this is especially, uh, productions like that have been especially uh, popular since the past two or three decades. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back. That was a good discussion. I'm going to go back to Julia uh, Sita. So we ended, yes, uh, on Monday we ended at a point where um, uh, where uh, Ptolemy is in his harem and having his fun. And so uh, I'm going to take a step back to, uh, so remember before that Cleopatra uh, was with Caesar and Caesar found out that uh, there was a plot against him and Cleopatra realizes that she's fallen in love with Caesar and, but now he's endangered because of what she did. Well, we didn't 
Uh, basically, Tulami is uh, Tulami that if you think is going to attack something. Um, so this is this is Cleopatra's aria. Uh, it's a very expressive aria. Cleopatra has some of the most uh, most uh, wonderful vocal music in this opera. And the other big operatic part is actually Tulami. Um, so yeah, this. Thank you.